Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense, continuing our clinical biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about sorbitol and diabetes, and don't forget that sorbitol contributes to cataracts in my eye. We talked about reducing sugars in the urine. We talked about galactosemia, lactose intolerance, glycogen storage diseases. And in the last video, we talked about insulinoma, which is a tumor in your pancreas secreting too much insulin. Today, we shall talk about glucagonoma, a tumor in my pancreas secreting too much glucagon. What are the names of the pancreatic cells that make glucagon? Answer, the alpha cells of the islets of Langerhans of the endocrine pancreas. Unlike insulinoma, glucagonoma symptoms is not just about the sugar, it's also about some skin diseases. Please watch the videos in this clinical biochemistry playlist in order. Is glucagon secreted from exocrine pancreas or secreted from the endocrine part of the pancreas? Endocrine, of course. Which parts? The islets of Langerhans. The endocrine pancreas does not have ducts. The endocrine pancreas secretes hormones, not enzymes. And these hormones are secreted directly into the blood. Glucagon comes from the alpha cell. Insulin came from the beta cell. Somatostatin, the doofus, comes from the delta cell. The exocrine pancreas is for enzymes, but the endocrine pancreas is for hormones. Glucagon comes from the alpha cell of the pancreas. Insulin and amylin from the beta cell of the pancreas. Somatostatin from the delta cell because it's a doofus, it inhibits everything, it even inhibits its own secretion. And the pancreatic polypeptides comes from the PP cells. All of these are endocrine cells of the pancreas. What does glucagon do? It raises your blood glucose. Why? Because glucagon is the hero of the fasting state or the starving state. If I'm starving, what do you think I should do? You should break down your proteins into amino acids. Hopefully you can use them as a source of energy or convert them to glucose. Not all of them. Only the glucogenic amino acids can give you glucose in gluconeogenesis. And I should break down my glycogen into glucose. Why? Because I'm fasting or because I'm starving and I need glucose right now for energy. And I should break down my triglycerides into free fatty acids. Anytime I do this, ketone bodies will leave the chat and they will go to my blood and I will have ketonemia. These ketone bodies are acids. Do you remember their names? Acetone, acetoacetic acid, and beta-hydroxybutyric acid. These are acids. They can lead to ketoacidosis. So when I have too much glucagon, because I have a glucagonoma, which is a tumor in the pancreas that secretes too much glucagon, I'll have too much protein breakdown, too much glycogen breakdown, ergo hyperglycemia, and too much triglyceride breakdown, ergo hyperketonemia or ketosis or ketoacidosis. Which brings us to the quiz of last time. In the last video, I gave you this quiz. Here is your serum glucose, your serum fatty acid, and your serum acetoacetic acid with your normal pancreas. Suppose that I removed your pancreas, i.e. I depancreatized you. What do you think is gonna happen to your serum glucose, your serum free fatty acids, and your serum acetoacetic acid? Please pause and try to answer these three questions yourself. Now, let me tell you what's going on. When I remove your pancreas, you know what's gonna happen? You will lose your insulin, and you will lose your glucagon, and you will lose your somatostatin. Okay, if insulin is toast, who's gonna take over? Something that's anti-insulin. How about glucagon? Well, I remove the pancreas, no more glucagon. What else is anti-insulin? Almost every other hormone. Cortisol is anti-insulin. Epinephrine is anti-insulin. So, in a depancreatized subject, cortisol and epinephrine will rule the field. And cortisol and epinephrine are like glucagon. What do you mean? They are catabolic hormones. They break down glycogen into glucose. So what's going to happen to my serum glucose, please? Your serum glucose will go up. How about my serum free fatty acids? Well, cortisol and epinephrine will break down the triglycerides into free fatty acids. So serum free fatty acids go up. How about serum acetoacetic acid? Oh, that's a ketone body. When I break down triglycerides, I get ketonemia. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. How did the insulin work? Receptor tyrosine kinase. But how does glucagon work? It's a G-protein coupled receptor, namely GS coupled, to increase the cyclic AMP. To learn more about the cyclic AMP system and the G-protein, please refer to my endocrinology playlist. 
Insulin versus glucagon, anabolic on everything, catabolic on everything, anti-ketogenic, big time. Insulin hates ketosis, glucagon is pro-ketosis. Insulin dephosphorylates the rate-limiting enzyme, glucagon phosphorylates the rate-limiting enzyme. Insulin stimulates a phosphatase, that's how you remove a phosphate, but glucagon stimulates a kinase, that's how you add a phosphate. And that's why glucagon is gonna help us convert ATP into cyclic AMP, and then cyclic AMP will activate protein kinase A. Everything here is A, alpha cells, lots of acetone and acetoacetic acid, and beta hydroxybutyric acid convert ATP into cyclic AMP and activate protein kinase A. The islet cell tumors include insulinoma, glucagonoma, somatostatinoma, gastrinoma, also known as zollinger ellison syndrome, and please don't forget to add VIPoma. Insulinoma was discussed in the previous video. Do not forget, it's the most common islet cell tumor, and most patients have MEN1 disease as well. Let's talk about glucagonoma. Unlike insulinoma that had fasting hypoglycemia, glucagonoma will have hyperglycemia. But it's not just about the glucose, it's also about dermatitis. The skin inflammation is migratory, it migrates from one area of my skin to another, and is necrolytic. Lysis means destruction. Necrosis means cell death. That's ugly. And glossitis, inflammation of the tongue. Stomatitis, inflammation of the mouth. Sometimes mild anemia and mild diabetes. Why? Because when you have too much glucagon, what's gonna happen to your blood sugar? It will go up like crazy. This is diabetes or diabetes-like. How can I diagnose it? Well, increase serum glucose, increase serum glucagon, not just in the serum, but also in the urine. And you can visualize the tumor with a CT scan, of course, or an MRI, ultrasound, etc. How can I I treat it, remove the tumor surgically and give octreotide until the surgery occurs. Octreotide is a somatostatin analog. Oh, it's like the doofus. It's a universal inhibitor. It's going to inhibit insulin secretion and it will inhibit glucagon secretion. To learn more about the different types of insulin, calculating the dose of insulin for a patient of diabetes, to learn about the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes, to learn about diabetic ketoacidosis and much more, download my endocrine pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectsnalis.com. To learn about the filtration fraction and the glomerular filtration rate, download my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectsnalis.com. If you do not want to download my premium courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button, choose the highest tier. It will give you access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus where medicine makes perfect sense.